Uh, and I really wanted to talk to you, James, specifically because I know you've got deleted a whole bunch of places. I tried to share your video on Twitter today, yeah, and it, and it said you're spreading disinformation. And I'm like, right. wait, what? I clicked on the link and it gave me some uh, rambling, jumbling nonsense that mm -hmm. de didn't even address the claims you were making, right? <laughs> but but you couldn't like it. You couldn't comment. Right. You couldn't do anything about it. So, how has it been using alternatives? How have your numbers uh, have your numbers dwindled? Have your numbers got higher? Mm -hmm. How's the fight with online censorship? Because they're going after you pretty hard. Well, uh, and Eric's in the room with me. I mean, we, we've gotten the most watched views ever. Hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm. We've trended on Twitter. Think, think of this. Think of it. I've trended on Twitter and Veritas has trended on Twitter for each and every story we've broke yep. and I'm banned from Twitter and I'm suing Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't make that shit up. Yep. Um, the reason why is because of distribution by proxy. So it doesn't matter like if I get banned and he gets banned and the third guy will upload the video and I, t I text message a click to tweet link like I, I sent to you. And, and you can click on it and it'll embed the video populate. Now they'll try to censor it and do things but um, for the most part, they haven't taken me down. I have actually uh, sent a letter to Mark Zuckerberg this week saying, please do ban me. I want you to ban me. Um, cut my tongue out of my mouth on the eve of the release of the whistleblower, and it will only make people want to tune in to see what they have to say. Mm -hmm. So I'm leaning into the censorship. I'm willing to lose everything. And I think you have to be. But every video that we've done, Eric, uh, is in the room. He's, he's the guy who, who does social media with Veritas. Um, every video we've done has gotten millions of views on YouTube and on Twitter over the last few releases. So um, I'm, I'm hopeful as long as the content is strong enough and true. Now, I'm not opining on the vaccine. I, I'm not even going to tell you my opinion about it. I'm just showing facts. And because I've sued the New York Times and sued Twitter and sued CNN, there's a part of me that feels these companies are actually afraid of me. Uh, by violating their own rules, by, by crossing some Rubicon they haven't yet crossed. So, so far, yes, they'll add the little tags and advertisements under the video, but they haven't taken us down. Yeah, I remember it was very difficult to share your video, and I was just wondering, you know, what's going to happen from here. But seeing all the alternatives, seeing a lot of different platforms jump up, seeing all the individual people kind of rise up, seeing the 75,000 dislikes on the Dr. Fauci documentary, <laughs> seeing the chants everywhere. I mean, how can you not have hope? And, and, and when the reality gets so skewed on the mainstream yeah. media by the government, by the, by the corporations, where literally Joe Biden was claiming that the unvaccinated are the ones putting the economy at risk today. Mm -hmm. That was literally what he was saying. Well, something, there, something interesting yeah. happened to me. Uh, a lot of people were posting that when they tried to put the link up to yep. the story, they were getting warnings on Facebook. Yep. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yes. We've, I've seen, I, I wish I had these messages in front of me. I've seen all types of weird, in fact, Eric, one of the, it seems like they were actually manufacturing custom messages just for me. Oh. <laughs> it's like, a, there was a, <laughs> oh, nice. and you used to be able to ratio people on Twitter, right? So, right. so uh, we have, you know, 600,000 people on Telegram. So if I just post a URL of, of the guy on Twitter, like making some boneheaded comment, they get ratioed. Twitter disabled people from doing that now you can't ratio people so they're they're customizing the interface so that you you're not allowed they're trying to, to hide it we, did, we, did you know that uh, uh, there is a website tracking likes and dislikes on joe biden's videos showing that they erase dislikes yeah I, but but here's what i was gonna say so whenever i hear that there's censorship on facebook i immediately i'm like all right try me and i don't know i've had no problem posting the the stories on facebook they've not been deleted and i've been I've given oh, no okay. warnings Facebook is oh, really screwed here, up. Here, here, here's one. Russell Brandon, blue check mark. Um, Project Veritas is taking the exciting leap from mostly harmless bullshit to bullshit that will actively cause people to die. Um, <laughs> and, and so exciting. so I, I sent this URL to 500,000 people, but if you go to his Twitter page, you can't comment on him unless Russell Brandon is mentioned. So they're taking steps to eliminate this, but um, again, it wasn't my claim I'm quoting Pfizer executives. You understand the distinction? Like, I'm not opining about what I think about about the virus or it's about no, emails no. in writing. I'm yeah. quoting their vice president yeah. saying we must lie to the people, we must deceive the people. This is this is a uh, the, the law of non contradiction. You shouldn't lie to people. It, whether you're left, right, Republican, Democrat, it doesn't. You shouldn't lie. Well, I, I, was right? actually, I was actually just talking to Sean Spicer on Newsmax about uh, they edited Joe Biden's comments because he made the snide comment where like, you know, when cinema gets harassed, doesn't happen to people with Secret Service. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, he, and so he's saying mm. NBC reports this comment, but they cut out that part. 
So you don't get the full context. It's deceptively edited. My immediate reaction was like, oh, I love it. They deceptively edit their videos. And then they can write all day about how James O'Keefe is doing that when he's showing you people literally say things in a conversation. Oh, I have, I have one quick story, Luke, about something you said about censorship. So, so one of the things they do, which I know you're familiar with, is they use these fact checkers, you know, mm -hmm. like fact check or experts say story has been debunked. I love that one. Experts say. It's like, imagine if you're, someone walks on in, in on you, cheating on your wife, you say, I'm sorry, honey, experts say this has been debunked. <laughs> but, um, but anyways, the, the USA Today, uh, what they do is they work with Facebook to do a fact check, right? So that they can put out a, a piece that's used to justify to get your thing banned on Facebook. So Facebook can say, well, experts say USA Today. So USA Today called me, Tim, after the first video, the, 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 the HHS whistleblower in our series two weeks ago. And I said, oh, here we go again. USA Today is setting this up. So I don't know what to do because no matter what I say, it doesn't matter. They've already written their article. They're just right. asking me for comment. To, uh, so what I did is I called USA Today and I recorded myself leaving a voicemail for USA Today. And then I distributed my comment to USA Today to everyone, preempting them, saying, if you don't publish my comment, I will sue you. USA Today did not put out the article. Whoa. And then uh. Facebook didn't take the article down. So I think the way to preempt communists, the way to, because we're dealing with, just, let's just call it what it is, communism. <laughs> the way to preempt communists is to publicly announce what they're going to do. Record yourself giving the comment. Here, world, I'm, I'm giving my comment to USA Today. Here is my comment. If you don't publish this, I'm going to sue you. And they know I'm not bluffing. So, so USA Today didn't publish that article and Facebook didn't take us down. It's, it's, it's what we mentioned before about, um, you know, in, in a previous segment, we were just talking about uh, Congress questioning someone from, you know, Pfizer about yeah. fetal tissues. The fact checkers do the same game. They, someone will make an assertion and then the fact checkers will take a similar but different claim to make it sound like they're debunking the claim. So next thing you know, we're going to see Snopes saying our fetal, you know, the claim, a Project right. Veritas story releases a bombshell. People are now saying, see, non sequitur. Yes, yes, non -sequitur, logical non sequitur. It's, 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 a, it's not... It's not so much that they're lying, it's that they're, it's the logical non sequitur, it's the fallacious logic. They change the subject and then, and then there's this game of telephone and before you know it, O'Keefe made a claim that I did not make that claim. It's that's brilliant. That's the funniest thing about, I think, almost all of the work you do is when you put these videos out, you're not saying, I believe in this policy and that policy and I voted for Bush. Like, none right. of those things happen. Right. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll make the, they'll, they'll, it's a straw man argument. Effectively, it's what it is, straw can, man. Can you, can you guys just sue Wikipedia already? Uh, we're working on it. Uh, we're going to sue the users on Wikipedia. And since I last saw you, as you know, we defeated the New York Times motion to dismiss. The New York Times appealed that, tried to issue an emergency stay so that we couldn't depose them. We defeated their emergency stay. So we're, we're, we're getting pretty far in our lawsuit. Obviously, the wheels of justice turn slowly, but um, I think it has deterred them, Tim, from, from lying. How, you, you, you launched that thing recently, the, the, the Defense Fund, I think? Uh, or? Yes, Project Veritas Legal Organization, which is under our 501c3. It, it, it was your idea, actually, the People's Defamation Defense Fund. We just named it Project Veritas Legal. Nice. So you stole my idea and renamed it. How's yeah. it? Well, well, technically, it was on my idea, but don't worry about that. <laughs> it was your, it's it was totally your idea. It's it totally fine. Idea. Yeah. Uh, it, either way, it's, it's amazing that that's happening. We need more of that. And I would say what you're doing is, is, is not even controversial. It's just journalism. It's what journalism used to be. A lot of journalism, what we see right now is literally regurgitating what the power structure says and then saying now do this you don't yes. even tell people what to do uh, I mean you have your own personal opinions you you, ha you have your own biases everyone has their own biases but there's a big distinction between what we're seeing in the mainstream media and what we're seeing with alternative media what we're seeing with you and I think we need more of that more than ever um, and then I I'm just trying to think of other ways maybe we could help facilitate that or, or get How involved many, in that I think journalism is is reluctant to get into an exposed position where they're seeing as affecting events and rather than just reporting to them and Traditionally, there was always this adversarial nature to journalism, but these days, like you say, they only print the established line. They only are allowed to publish what they're told on the record. In fact, quote unquote, journalists wait to see what the corporation has to say, and only when they've given, given, been given permission to, to report the thing do they report the thing. Yeah. It's become so much worse even in the last couple of years. They don't publish anything that's not the established public line. C uh, CNN's health advisor just came out today and said Los Angeles has just invoked some of the strictest vaccine policies in the United States. 
excellent. This needs to spread <laughs> everywhere. That's not journalism. That's uh, that's seen in hiring a, a lunatic, yes. sociopathic, crazy person that wants to enforce their will onto you. Journalism is about letting people hear the story, letting them decide themselves, letting them see the evidence, and then just leaving it there for the viewer to decide what is right for them. Informed consent, something that, again, needs to come back more than ever. And and I, I would say we don't have any of it. I don't think, I think these people are so fundamentally unaligned even on the First Amendment these days. And, and there's this great uh, uh, reporter named David Shaw who wrote, I'm a great believer in the reporter as an observer. First-hand observation is the ult ultimate documentation. Almost every big story that we do, we often have to impersonate someone in order to have the first-hand observation of the thing happening. That's what investigative journalism does. You use whistleblowers, you go undercover, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the perversion. The perversion I've seen is that they won't say anything unless the corporation or government official tells them you're allowed to say this. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you all next time.